it's always nice to be able to use automation to make things simpler, easier, and faster. But automation isn't always helpful if it doesn't understand what we're specifically trying to accomplish. When it comes to our data, Excel is very good at analyzing what we have and making good guesses as to what questions we want to answer about it. But it's not always perfect. There are also just times when we know exactly what we want and we want to create it in our own way. At these times, we want to create pivot tables manually instead of using some of the other tools that Excel provides. For pivot tables, our primary goal is to summarize and simplify data. And this means before we get started designing our own pivot tables manually, we should ask ourselves a very simple question. What are we trying to show with our data? Once we ask the question, and especially if we verbalize the answer, it's actually going to make the design and the development of our pivot table very easy because we'll answer our own question. For example, let's say that what we want to show are the total sales for each region by sales rep and sales plan type. We've just answered the question. We know that we're going to need total sales and we know that our categories are going to be region and sales rep, as well as sales plan type. All we have to do is organize them on the page. So let's get started. There are actually two ways that we can do this. One is to start from the insert tab on the ribbon and choose pivot table. I'm gonna recommend an alternative though. I'd like to make sure that we first put our cursor somewhere in our data, then go to the home tab and choose Format as table. Now, yes, we could have also done this from the insert tab. I just wanted to show you a different way. I'm going to select one of the items from the gallery, make sure that it has properly selected the table, which should be A1 through K51, and click or tap OK. Once the table is defined, it's going to select the Design Contextual tab for table tools. And from the Tools group on this tab, we see an option Summarize with Pivot Table. Now, why was this important? Because when we create pivot tables from regular ranges of data, if we add or remove records, we'll have to manually adjust that area for our pivot table as well. If, on the other hand, we do it as we're doing now, and we first create a table, and then create a pivot table off of the data table, the pivot table will always include all of the rows of records in the table itself. It automates the process. So with that said, we're going to click or tap Summarize with Pivot Table. This brings up what I often think of as the remnants of the old Pivot Table wizard. In the old days of Excel, there was a three-step wizard that we went through. Now we just get to see one screen, and it asks us a couple of very simple questions. First of all, where is the data? Select a table or a range. This should already be done, and indeed it is because the table we just had selected was already selected when we started this process. You also could choose to use an external data source if you wanted to. At the bottom of the window, don't forget to say where you want your new pivot table to be created, on a new worksheet or in an existing worksheet. If you're working with multiple tables that are related together, you also can choose to have this data added as part of the data model. But that's part of a different topic, so we're not going to address that here. We're going to accept all of the defaults and simply click or tap OK. This creates a new worksheet for our pivot table and displays what I like to call the working parts of the pivot table. There's now a pivot table region or area on the current worksheet. And on the right-hand side of the screen, we're seeing the pivot table fields list. Regardless of how you originally create your pivot table, whether it's using the data analysis tools or the recommended pivot tables option, all of them should bring you to this particular place once you've made those choices. This is where we do all of the work, regardless of how the pivot table was originally created. But let's talk a little bit about this pivot table field list because it really is a critical element of working with pivot tables. As its name implies, the pivot table field list contains a list of the fields that are available. We can see all of these at the top of the screen. It may be necessary to scroll down depending on how many fields there are. If you're working in Excel 2013, you'll see an option at the bottom that says More Tables. This is the option that allows you to work with more than one data source, kind of like making Excel into a relational database. We're not going to use that, but I did want to show you that this is where you can include data from multiple table sources within one pivot table. So we have this wonderful list of fields at the top. We notice that there are checkboxes, 
We also may notice at the bottom of the pane, there are several different areas labeled filters, columns, rows, and values. At the very bottom of the pane is a check mark that says defer layout updates. We're gonna talk about all of these options. Fields are added to each of the possible four areas of the pivot table, and we can do that in several different ways. For example, if we simply check one of the boxes, it's going to add a field. Let's do that. We talked about wanting to work with several different components, including the customer type, the region, and the sales rep. So let's go ahead and place a check mark next to customer type. Customer type happens to be a text field. And when we check a text field, Excel automatically adds it to the row labels. If we check a numeric field, it will automatically get added to the summary values. We're not stuck with those. Those are just the ways that Excel works by default. So by placing a check mark, we can see that the field has been added down to the rows area. And if we look at the worksheet, we can also see that we've already started building a pivot table. And we can see corporate, government, and private are three different types of customers that are listed in our pivot table. Imagine that our source data had a million rows. What we can see is that by simply adding a single field, we still get a benefit. This is a quick trick to get a list of unique values from a long data set. In this case, each of our types of customers, maybe each vendor name, or maybe each department within a company. Each of them will only be shown one time. It's not really the full power of a pivot table, but we're already starting to see some of the benefits of using them. Well, let's take a look at other ways that we can add these fields to the pivot table. We know that by placing check marks, it's automatically going to add them to some areas but we can also simply drag and drop fields where we want them to go. For example, let's drag and drop region by pressing and holding on it at the top into the columns area. When we let it go, it as well is added to the pivot table. So we can now see east, north, and southwest running across row four, acting as the new column labels for our pivot table. What we're missing though is the summary information because we haven't added anything to the values area yet. Typically, this is going to be numeric values because we're going to create a sum or an average, but it could be a text field. Just know that if it's a text field, the only thing we can do with that is a count function. If we scroll down to the bottom of our available fields, we get to see a field called order total. Let's go ahead and drag that right on down to the values area, and we can see that as promised, it defaults to a sum. We can also see that we now have a fairly complete pivot table. We've taken 50 individual records, compacted it down, and summarized it. So we can now see our order totals, both by type of customer and the region they're from, as well as the grand totals for each of those values. Let's move back to the pivot table field list one more time. And let's just put a check mark in sales rep. But let's say that this was actually an accident. Remember, when we check a box, it automatically goes to a certain area. And in this case, it's been added to our rows. If we don't want it there, that's okay. One of the beauties of pivot tables is it's very flexible and very forgiving. Each of the fields in the pivot table field list has a drop down, And from here, we have options to either move them to other areas or to remove them completely. In this case, we'll go ahead and choose remove the field. We also can simply drag and drop fields between the different areas if you prefer to do things that way. There are also a couple of settings for how the pivot table field list works as a whole. From the upper right corner, you'll see a drop down with a little gear on it. We can choose kind of the configuration or layout of this panel. Currently, we have things stacked one on top of each other, but we can also put them side by side. We could also choose to limit what we see here by showing field sections only or area sections only, either two by two or one by four. This is simply a matter of choice and you can click to change the layout if you so desire. One last setting to take a look at is at the very bottom and it's a check mark that says defer layout update. If we're working with a large set of source data, Every time we move things around on the pivot table, it may delay our ability to work with it while the pivot table updates. By checking defer layout, we can move everything around and get it exactly the way that we want 
Then we can click the Update button that will be available on the right-hand side to apply those updates all at once. Although the number of unique combinations of fields and how they are applied to the pivot table areas are really limitless and can be mind-boggling, the process of creating pivot tables manually is always the same. Identify the source data and add fields to the appropriate pivot table areas. Then manipulate the arrangement using the pivot table fields pane. It really never gets any harder than that.